Today we're going to look at one fish that really might be two different fish. Scientifically, it has one name, but the common names are different. A steelhead trout and a rainbow trout. Now these are identical fish in every way except for two. They look a little different on the outside, and one of them lives its whole life in fresh water while the other one goes to the ocean. Now, today we're going to look at whether these really are the same fish, regardless, or whether they are two different species. My name is Ethan Rotman. I coordinate the Classroom Aquarium Education Program for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're going to start off today looking at our fish tank that has baby steelhead trout. They were put in as eggs four weeks ago, and we'll see what's happened in the last four weeks. We're going to meet a real live scientist from UC Santa Cruz who's going to look at the two different lifestyles of these fish. We're going to meet a park ranger from Sonoma County Parks who's going to share with us some footage of real live adult steelhead trout. And we're going to go meet with our friends Shelly and Derek. Derek is also a biologist and he's going to answer some questions that have been sent in by students just like you. Let's start our journey. Let's meet with Tom Greer. He's an engineer, he's an avid fly fisher, he's an inventor, and he's the one taking care of our fish. Are you ready, Tom? I'm ready for you, Ethan, and thanks for the introduction. Welcome to Tank Time with Tom, everyone. Well, it's been four weeks since we put steelhead eggs into the tank. Can you believe it? Well, a lot has happened since then. And last week, as you saw, we were looking in the tank and there wasn't a whole lot to see because the, the alvin were hiding. They were all hiding behind the rocks. So we're gonna go and view from the top and take a closer look at what was going on. Here we are looking at the top of the tank. And last week, remember there were just a few alvin huddled in the corner? Well, they're all starting to swim up now this is really cool. I can see a lot of them right now. They're, they're pretty much fry right now. The, the belly sacs are almost gone. That's amazing. They're all just hanging out. I wanted to show you the feeding process. Now I've just got a little bit of food on here on a popsicle stick. So there's not much. It's like half the size of a pea. But I'm going to drop a little bit out of here and that might get them riled up a little bit. This is a great view. But look at them, aren't they just amazing? I'm just gonna hold it right there because that's just an awesome view. And they're just so, so amazing to watch. I sit here for a long time and just watch them anyways because they're just fascinating to watch. Now, you know, we were looking at steelhead at this point and there's also rainbow trout, which we're gonna talk about. Um, there's really not a whole lot of difference between the two when you look at them here, okay? I couldn't tell the difference, but there are some differences and I will pass this along to a specialist that will tell you a little bit, bo little bit more about that, okay? So um, we're gonna head over to Laura at American Fisheries and she's gonna show us some similarities and differences between steelhead and rainbow trout. So have fun, and I will see you next week. Here's Laura. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Goetz. I'm a graduate student at UC Santa Cruz and a NOAA affiliate. I currently study steelhead and rainbow trout and why some fish become steelhead and some become rainbow trout. Let's talk about the similarities and differences between steelhead and rainbow trout. I find it most helpful to look at species Oncorhychus micus from the perspective of their life history cycle because you can truly appreciate how rainbow trout and steelhead, though they look and act very differently, are actually different ecotypes of the same species of fish. Here we have the life history cycle of Omicus, and you can see that the hatchling has two choices, steelhead or rainbow trout. Let's start at the egg phase and work our way around the cycle to learn more. Does anyone recognize these? These here are eyed trout eggs from trout in the classroom last year. These guys don't know it yet, but they're destined to become rainbow trout. Now look at these hatchery eggs. These fish will become hatchery steelhead when they grow up. These eggs look pretty similar to me. 
We just saw that rainbow trout and steelhead have the same beginnings and are now arriving at the hatchling phase. This is a video of trout in the classroom trout being released into Lake Lamond. Aren't you low-key super proud of them? These fish have no access to the ocean, so they will for sure be rainbow trout. But steelhead start off just like this too. Whether a hatchling will become a rainbow trout or steelhead depends on lots of things, like if the hatchling can actually migrate or not, water temperature, and also genetics. Juvenile steelhead look identical to rainbow trout until they undergo a process called smultification that allows them to migrate to the ocean and survive in salt water. Freshwater fish can't live in the ocean. This also includes rainbow trout. Can anyone find the rainbow trout in this group of omicus? If you guess this guy, you are correct. It's pretty wild how different they can look. Rainbow trout have multitudes of colors, spots, and dots, while steelhead are very silvery. These differences in appearance come from their abilities to survive in different habitats. Juveniles start to look different around a year or so after hatching. Steelhead will migrate to the ocean, and but they will still return to fresh water to spawn with their fellow Omicus steelhead and rainbow trout. Next up, we'll be uh, journeying over to Sonoma County Regional Parks to meet Katya and the adult steelhead living at the Environmental Discovery Center. Hi, we are talking about steelhead and rainbow trout today. And I want to introduce a word right here on the whiteboard called anadromy. Can you say that? which is their home creek, to salt water, which is the ocean. And they will hang out in the estuary, which is part fresh water, part salt water, become adapted to the ocean, swim out to the ocean and get bigger and fatter and eat. And then an amazing thing is they will know when it's the time for them to go spawn in their home creek. They will find their home creek, swim up it, and they will lay their, bait, lay their eggs, which is called to spawn. Um, so these are steelhead. So do you all have any questions about rainbow trout and steelhead? Scientists do and they have been studying these fish for years, trying to figure out why some travels travel and some don't. Thanks, Katya and Thorsten. That was so great. It's time for Ask a Biologist. I'm Shelly Spriggs with Sonova Water, and I will be asking your questions to fisheries biologist Derek Acom from the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Our first question for Derek comes from Miles at Arroyo Seco Elementary. Miles asks, why do steelhead lay their eggs where they are born? Hi Miles. Returning to the same stream where they are born gives steelhead a competitive advantage. And if growing up in your local creek worked for you, chances are it will work out well for your offspring. Fish spawning in the ocean broadcast many eggs. The ocean offers little to no protection and has many predators. This method of reproducing is easy to do and has a low investment in energy from the parents. While fish spawning in streams generally have fewer predators, the habitat protects the eggs and juveniles. It's really hard to get there and it requires a huge investment in energy from the parents. All this results in better survival for steelhead spawning in the streams they were born in. Thanks for that great explanation, Derek. Our last question today is from Paige at Jefferson Elementary. Paige asks, why are steelhead called steelhead? Hi Paige, go Cloverdale Eagles. Common names sometimes have difficult to trace origins. They can mean many things and sometimes they are not unique. 
Scientific names are specific to only one organism and they follow a hierarchical structure. Steelhead, after they have gone to the ocean, have a metallic-like color. If you use your imagination, it may look like shiny steel to you. We may understand what a steelhead is, but on its own, the name isn't very specific. Oncorhynchus micus is the scientific name for a rainbow trout and steelhead. The genus name Oncorhynchus is a mixture of Greek, Russian, and other languages. It means hooked jaw. When they are ready to spawn, male steelhead develop a distinctive curve and hook in their lower jaw called a kite. The species name Mycus is fashioned after the Russian name for rainbow trout found on the Kamchatka Peninsula in eastern Siberia. I hope by now you can see why there's so much confusion over whether a steelhead and a rainbow are the same type of fish or whether they're different. After all, genetically they're the same. The differences are in how they look and the lifestyle they choose. Kind of like people. Some of us look different or live differently, but are we the same or are we really different? That's a question you can answer and maybe it's a good thing for you to create a short video and send it to your teacher or write a poem or an essay and see what your teacher has to say. I'm Ethan Rotman with California Department of Fish and Wildlife. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.